Okay guys, new educational style video for you today. Gonna to be going in depth on some strength resistance training and diving into what is progressive overload and the fundamentals of it. Now, I think aside from actually doing your training sessions and performing the exercises in your training sessions with good technique, I would say this is the most important thing with strength training, the most important thing to understand and I've been training since I was 14, I'm almost 27. So, you know, over 12 years of training and I only really kind of appreciated what this was, or I would say about three years in. Um, like when you start the gym, you obviously will make what they call newbie gains where you could literally go to the gym, pretty much have no idea what you're doing, move some weight from A to B. Even if your nutrition wasn't good, you'd be able to build muscle. But the more experience you get in your, you know, lifting journey, career, whatever you want to call it, the more you need to be focusing on the different components of progressive overload and understand how to progressively overload because it's not just adding weight, it's not just doing more reps, there's there's a few different forms of it which we're gonna break down, or which I'm gonna break down in this video. So just to actually define what progressive overload is, I think is important. So it's a gradual increase in weight, frequency, or number of reps in your strength training routine. And you can see from that definition there, there's, there's multiple parts of it which we'll be breaking down in this video. But to simplify that, essentially what you're doing is you're just increasing the total volume that you're doing. You know, that could be with a certain exercise, that could be within a training session, it could be over the course of a whole week. So essentially you get, you're aiming to get better week on week in the gym. And I say this to a lot of people who, you know, generally on consultation calls, things like that, people who are training regularly and going to the gym and exercising regularly, if you're not getting better every week in the gym, then there's something fundamentally wrong with your training routine or lifestyle factors that aren't allowing you to recover and progress. So you should be getting better each week. So why is progressive overload important? So essentially, if you're getting better each week, that by definition means that you are avoiding plateau. And I, I would say, aside from, as I said before, a lack of consistency and missing training sessions, plateauing in strength is one of the biggest reasons why people don't progress with you know building muscle and their physique in general. And it's therefore a big staller of progress. So progressive overload, essentially, you're, you're giving your body a reason to change. You know, For most people, the goal with strength training is to build muscle. Obviously, there are the metabolic benefits and strength training, which are gonna help you get lean and stay lean, but primarily most people strength train to build muscle. Um, like you can't go to the gym and do the same thing each week and expect your body to change, it won't happen. As I said before, progressive overload does become more important the more experience that you get. If you start focusing on it earlier in your journey, obviously it goes without saying you're gonna be able to progress at a faster rate. I'd probably be a little bit further ahead than I am now, potentially with a little bit more muscle if I kind of come across this from day one. Um, progress is also motivating. Like if you can see yourself getting stronger each week, which you will if you are progressively overloading, you'll see yourself doing more reps with the same weight. You'll see yourself actually lifting more weight, performing the exercise with better form. This progress is motivating. Like, like progress in any aspect of life is motivating. And if you get what we call kind of like, you know, that proof of concept, it's showing you that the thing you are doing is working. So if your strength training is working, you're building muscle, you're gaining strength, you're going to want to do it more and you're gonna to want to stick to the plan. And that's ultimately what leads to long-term results is adherence to a training program. You're not gonna to go to the gym and stick to a training program for eight weeks, make no progress and want to keep doing it. It's very unlikely. Obviously to progressively overload, you need to know what numbers you did. So it's really important that well, that you did in a certain session. Uh, and it's really important that you record that. So back in the day when I was at 15, I used to write down all my reps in a notebook, uh, literally every single fucking rep I did, every weight. Um, like these days, most people are tracking their lifts on an app. So we've got a coaching app, where our clients have their workouts in and they track all their lifts in there. Um, so it's really important that you track everything because you're not gonna be able to remember what you did last week. You might, you might remember the weight that you lifted on the deadlift. You know, for me last week it was 145 kg, but I can't actually remember how many reps I did on certain sets. And that, that's the level you need to take it to, is you need to know how many reps you did on certain sets. Because let's say you did, you know, you're doing three sets of eight to 10, you might've got 10 on 140 or whatever, nine on 140 and then eight on 140. You're not gonna be able to remember that. And then you wanna go into the gym the next week and add a rep or maybe add a little bit of weight. So there are different types of progressive, progressive overload. It's not just, weights and reps, but that's what I will be going over first. So I would say, you know, the most important one to understand from the outset for most people, especially beginners, 
would be how to add weight effectively. Now, this will depend what rep range structure you're using. So our clients will move through different phases of training. So for example, the example that we do have here is what I would call a, a rep range between eight and 10. It's not just, you know, you need to do three sets of 10. It's like you can land anywhere between eight and 10. Um, so obviously weight would be increasing the weight that you're lifting, adding weight to the bar. It could be using heavier dumbbells. It could be putting the pin on the heavier part of the machine on a lap pull down or something like that. It's really important to understand that you only want to add weight if you have maxed out the rep range. So for example, here, the client has written um, that they used eight kg dumbbells and they did three sets of 10. So they have maxed out that rep range. If they'd only done three sets of eight on eight kg, then the goal next week or the next time they did that session would be to increase the volume. So it could be, you know, three sets of nine, it could be three sets of 10, it could be a set of 10, nine and eight. It's all about increasing the volume. So only increase the weight um, if you've maxed out the rep range. And also the thing that a lot of people don't understand and forget is if you're maintaining, well, you should only increase the weight if you are satisfied with your form and you're performing all the reps with good quality. So you're much better off doing eight quality reps and 10 shit ones. So make sure that your form is intact at all times. And, you know, with this, you should be playing the long game. Like it's tempting to try and add, you know, five kg every single training session. And a beginner might be able to do that. Like it's unlikely, but that's obviously not sustainable long term. So play the long game, focus on maintaining your form, focus on quality reps and just adding a rep here and there. And if you can do that over time and work yourself through different phases of training like we do with our clients, you're going to get very strong and you're going to build a lot of muscle and you're going to progress a lot. It's going to be very motivating for you. And just remember what your goal is as well. Like, I'm not, I'm not speaking to powerlifters. We don't coach powerlifters. The majority of our clients, they want to, to build muscle, lose fat. Um, and the, uh, the most important thing for them in order to do that is to build strength um, and get a good contraction on the muscle. It's not about just moving weight from A to B. Another form, well, another primary form of progressive overload would be reps. So similar to what I was kind of saying before, you know, it could be three sets of eight and then you add a rep the next week. It could be nine, eight, eight. It could be like this example here, 10, eight, eight. So that's really important. Obviously, you're only going to be doing that in a rep range where sometimes we'll give our clients, you know, three sets of six. So for that example, it would just be increasing the weight. Um, but yeah, until you complete, for example, three sets of eight to 10, and so you increase the reps until you have completed that upper end range and then you'd increase the weight. Um, and it's important to remember as well, I think a lot of people think that they can't actually adjust the weight within their workout. Of course you can. So you, you adjust the weight if you over or undershoot. So you might select a weight for, you know, for example here, the set of eight, let's say it was 50 kg and you got eight reps, but you're like, there's no way I'm going to be able to get another eight reps on the next set. Just drop it down to 47.5 or 45. You can adjust the weight. That's really important because again, we're not powerlifting. We're trying to get a stimulus on the muscle and build muscle and build strength. Um, in the context of, you know, our client programming, so we do block programming where a block of training will last four to five weeks, depending on the client and their situation. And the goal within that training block is to progressively overload as much as possible. The reason that we do this is I've personally found it works really well from an adherence and motivation standpoint for the client. If they've got a block of training that they know is only lasting four weeks, they're not, they're not going to get bored of it and they're going to really, really focus on trying to get as strong as possible and pushing the performance in that block. If you give someone, you know, a block of training that's 12 weeks long and it's relatively open-ended, there's not really any end in sight. So I found that clients are a little bit less motivated when we do that and we put longer ones in. Now, obviously it does depend. If a client, you know, was still progressing very well in week five, we could run it for six weeks, but it's unlikely. Uh, and, it, and it depends how experienced the individual is as well. Like, I would probably not be able to progressively overload for six weeks straight just because I've got high experience and I wouldn't be able to add weight every week in the gym. It also depends on how many calories you're consuming. So if I'm consuming, you know, maintenance calories, I'm not going to be able to progressively overload as much as someone who is in a big calorie surplus. Um, but, you know, in an ideal world within a training block, try and increase the weight each week. That's what we should always be aiming for. And at the start of the block of training, find your baseline numbers. There's going to be some different exercises, different rep ranges to get accustomed to. And then you can overload from there, which is what I've written here in weeks two to four or five. Go for it, up the weight, um, but leave something in the tank for the previous, for the next week so that you can progress the overload then. And by the time you get to the end of, you know, week four or five, you should be pretty cooked and then you'll get a new block of training. So that's what we do with our clients. That's the way we program for them. 
Um, another form of progressive overload, I, was, I would call it secondary to, to reps and weight would be tempo. Um, so as, as I've said here, there is a lot to be said for actually just slowing things down in your training session. A lot of people certainly perform the eccentric, which, uh, which on most exercises is the way down too quickly, um, especially when, when they add weight. Like even I've videoed myself in the gym to put an Instagram story up and you know, I think that I'm doing the tempo at a, a 3-1 tempo and actually it's more like a, a 2-1 tempo. So just always check yourself there. Um, the propensity for most people I'd say is to add the weight but start to do things too quickly and then you're actually losing the, the stimulus that you're trying to apply to, to the muscle in the first place. So you'd probably be better off lifting a little bit less weight and actually moving things a little bit slower. Because again, the goal is hypertrophy, it's not powerlifting. Um, if you're slightly fatigued one day, but you still want to improve or progressive overload, you could just slow the tempo down and work with a lighter weight. Um, and you're still creating that intensity, you're still stimulating hypertrophy, but you're not frying the nervous system, which is gonna give your body a chance to recover, and then you could go again the next week. Um, similar to tempo is form improvement. So with a lot of our clients, like we generally don't coach beginners, obviously there are some, but most people are, I would say in, you know, maybe, the second to fifth year in their, in their training journey. So there's still a lot of room for improvement in terms of form. So we're always working back and forward with them and assessing technique. Like even with myself, I work with a coach too. I'm always sending them over form clips. So that is a form of progressive overload in itself is improving the form. And the more experience you get, the more you need to hone in on the forms of progressive overload like this, rather than just trying to stack weight on the bar each week. Um, and in my opinion, you know, rep one should look pretty similar to rep 10 in terms of tempo. Like obviously, you know, the last couple of reps of the set, if you are really pushing the intensity and you've got the experience to do that, might be a little bit more sloppy, might use a little bit more momentum, but you know, all in all, you sh we should try and make sure that most of the reps look similar. Um, now this kind of video presentation has primarily been around how to progressively overload for resistance training, um, but you can apply this to you know functional fitness finishes as well. So, for example, if you, you know, if you so for some of our clients, we'll pair a rowing segment with some kettlebell swings or you know some lower body work. You can try and increase the reps and weights there as well, um, but it's not quite as important as as when you're trying to progressively overload on the compound lift. But you can also you know reduce the rest time. You can go harder on the ergs, on the ski, on the assault bike or whatever, and track those two and try and progressively overload because a lot of people are putting so much effort on their main compounds and then when they get to their accessory work, like, you know, pec flies and things like that, they don't track the weights and they don't try and progressively overload, but there's a lot of gains to be made by doing that and on finishes as well. With running and endurance training, you're looking at different indicators to progressively overload, like we're trying to improve the heart rate, um, and we might be working in a certain pace range because you couldn't go out and just try and run, for example, faster every single week. You just end up getting injured um, and trying to improve the time as well. So it's a little bit different for, for running and resistance training. Um, everything I mentioned here and everything you know that we say to our clients is in an ideal world. So there are going to be some situations and instances where you, where you don't actually want to progressive overload, where you want to hold, deliberately hold yourself back. And some of those instances would be, well, it could be, you know, an injury. Obviously, if let's say you've got a bit of a, a niggly knee, you've got an injury there, maybe, you know, trying to go heavier on the walking lunges isn't going to be productive or sensible to do. Illness, obviously your nervous system is already going to be affected. So taxing that even further by trying to lift more than the week before would not be a good idea. Uh, when you're overly fatigued, so this kind of applies to the people that are doing hybrid training. So like myself, if I'm at the back end of a training block, and I've really been pushing the running, maybe it wouldn't be productive for me to try and go and squat more the next week because I need to actually give my body a chance to recover. Um, other external stress factors, so not even related to health and fitness in the gym, this could be you know relationships, it could be work stress, they are literally all stressors on the body and if you keep applying more stresses in the gym, it could just you know make things worse and make you more stressed and it could cause illness, can cause water retention, things like that from cortisol release. Um, sleep is obviously the key one. If you're used to getting seven and a half hours of sleep and suddenly you get four and a half, five hours of sleep for a couple of days, one, it's gonna be unlikely that you're able, actually able to progress with overload in the first place, but secondly, obviously wouldn't be a good idea to do that. Um, and as I've said before, like when you're looking to improve form, if we're working with a client to help them perfect their deadlift technique, we need to kind of forget about adding weight potentially for a few weeks until they've mastered that form. So just some things to kind of take into account because it is all, in an ideal world. 
Um, and I think it's really important as well to understand the context of the client and where they're at in their health and fitness journey and for us as coaches to actually manage expectations with them. So as I said before, the rate of progress will be much slower for more advanced individuals. Like I'm almost 13 years into training. If I add one or two reps to my deadlift each week, I'm, I'm buzzing. Whereas if, if that was a beginner, I'd probably expect them to be progressing faster than that. Um, like for me, it's all about progressing within a training block rather than trying to progress on what I did years ago in the gym because, you know, body fat percentage can take what well, can have a factor. If you're a lot leaner than you were a few years ago, it's unlike, maybe unlikely that you're going to be as strong. That's what I found anyway. Obviously, with being leaner, generally comes a lighter body weight. Same thing applies. Um, if you're suddenly doing a lot more endurance work alongside your strength training, that's also going to have an impact as well. So my legs, I'm not able to, I can't squat as much as I used to a few years ago. Um, even though, you know, my legs are probably more developed now. So a lot of things come into account. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you might have been well slept, you might have got your nutrition on point, but sometimes you just have a shit day and you're just not feeling it and maybe you're not able to progress to be overload for whatever reason. So I think those things are just important to understand. So, yeah, hope you found that useful. Uh, if you are interested in coaching, just fill out the inquiry form in the bio of this video or you can find me on Instagram, joe underscore is underscore fit.